Hello everyone, and it's great to have you here on a Thursday afternoon in Barcelona. My name is Florian, I'm uh, the Managing Director of Signature Products and also at the Manager Board of uh, IHA, the Industrial Hemp Association. And uh, I can say it's a really exciting time to be here in the hemp and cannabis industry, especially the last couple of years. When we look, for example, and in Germany and Luxembourg, they basically plan to legalize recreational cannabis. And also, we're doing a lot of research that um, we see a lot of more benefits in, of the hemp plant. And, and you just explained it perfect. We have so many benefits, health benefits, uh, which we're seeing. And also, we see much more industries. In Germany, in the past, there was not really a big industry for hemp. But now we can see that the food, the feed, cosmetic, textile, construction, vape, all kinds of industries are really into hemp. So today we will talk a bit about the German hemp market and also about the products which are there. And at my company, at Signature Products, we're not just looking at what kind of like products are existing on the market, we're also looking into what is the future. So we're doing a lot of product development. I want to show you so what is existing in Germany and also what will be the future and maybe then also in the whole European market. So let's have a look in general about the hemp market. So what we can see is um, on the left side here uh, that in 2011 we only had a cultivation of um, 8,000 hectare and in 2019 it grew up to 50,000. You probably know that charts here. And in 2020 about CBD on the uh, right side, we can see that um, the money which was spent what was 8 billion euro and researchers expect that it's going to go up to 13 billion euro. But now let's look into the products which we have on the German hemp market. On the German hemp market we see different products such as hemp seeds, hemp powder, hemp seed oil, pesto, tea, hemp flour, spices. We see cereal bars, cookies, marinade. But do you know what they all have in common, they all have in common that they're made of hemp seeds. So what we know is, if you want to invest into the food market in the hemp industry, you have to do something with hemp seeds. But we think it's not just going to be hemp seeds in the future. We also think there's more. So there's a product, it's hemp protein, and this is made of hemp seeds. And we think this is more than just a normal protein like soy or pea. We, we think it's more. So let's have a look into this. When we look on the hemp protein, it's just not, not just a plant-based protein, it's made of the hemp seeds and it's also certified organic and can be non-GMO, which is really a big thing here in Europe. And also, uh, it includes all 20 amino acids and all essential fatty acids. But why actually hemp protein? Why do we think at Signature Product that this is a big thing in the future or why right now it's growing a lot? We have to understand better the food market. So when we look into the food market, we know the food market is, has, is worth over $6 trillion, and the meat industry is about 1.4. And I'm talking about meat, but we're talking about hemp at the same time. Where is the connection? So let's have a look into this. In 2025, we expect that the conventional meat, the meat we know from the butchers or from the supermarket, is still going to be a 90% market share, but also they're going to be a 10% vegan meat replacement. But when you look then, at, in 2040, you can see the conventional meat will go down to 35% and the 25% vegan meat replacement, and then they're going to be cultured meat from the lab. And the reason is, why is there a change? Um, all we, you probably have heard it in the media. I mean, like, there's a lot of things going on. We want to be more environmental friendly, so let's have a look at it. Actually, 25% of all global greenhouse gas emissions go into the, is, is, is coming from agriculture. We know that 70% of total fresh water usage uh, is for agriculture. We know one third of the global energy goes into the food production and three fourths, so 75% is used for the meat industry. So we have the climate concern as one reason, but also animal welfare. The people more want to take care of the animals, but also the health uh, reason is, is, a, is a thing in, in Europe where they more focus on. So when we look in the market itself, also an alternative protein market, and which is also hemp a part of it, hemp protein, we can see in 2020, 13 million metric tons um, has been like, uh, shipped all over the world, uh, which was plant-based. And in 2035, we expect it's going to be 69 million metric tons. And when we look on the European market, we can see 
in 2018, actually 2.4 billion euro has been moved in plant-based proteins. And in 2020, it was 3.6 billion. So it was a growth by 49%. And when we look at the markets, we can see that Germany has had the, the, like had the biggest market, but also the biggest growth by 53% to 1 billion euro within one year. In the UK, 39% and Spain, 18%. And we expect the next couple of years is going to be much stronger. Um, the reason for that is we have obviously different kind of people. We have vegetarians, flexitarians, and pescatarians. And you can see in Germany, there are a lot of them. And also in Spain, it has 2.1%, 30.1% flexitarians, and 2.1% um, pescatarians. But we see this, the studies actually published every year. And 2019, everywhere it was lower. So we expect the next couple of years it's going to grow more and more. So the question is, what kind of products can we do with plant-based meat or plant-based protein? On the left side, we see a burger. But this burger is completely vegan. There's no meat in it, and it's organic certified. And this product tastes really, really good. Like, I'm, I'm grown up with meat. I was eating meat every day, basically. I'm still not vegan, to be honest. I try to really reduce it to, like, twice or three times a month. But I can say this tastes really like meat. But we can do more of hemp protein. We also can do some other stuff. And you can see here on the left side, I mean, like, I'm German, and we Germans, we do a lot of schnitzel. <laughs> Maybe you've heard about that. And on the left side, you can see a schnitzel, and I love that as I'm a German, but I can say it tastes completely the same, and it's made of hemp protein. Even the panate, which you can see outside, is made of hemp protein. And a lot of people don't know about that. So there's a huge market for the food industry. And one big factor, obviously, that companies decide to do like to switch over to hemp protein is also obviously the price. So we have to look at other like competitive products. And those prices, they are around. I know you can get things cheaper, you can, think you can pay more for some stuff, but I can tell this is the price around when you small like medium amounts. So for genetic, genetic modified soil, you pay around two euros, sometimes cheaper, sometimes even 160, 180. Uh, for non-GMO, like for non-genetic modified, you pay around 360, for P around 530, for wheat around 360, and for around uh, for organic hemp protein, you pay three euro. But you see, you can see, and it's organic. It's much cheaper than a lot of others. So this was the food market. What I can say about this is, if you want to invest into the hemp market for a really huge industry, do something with hemp food, and especially like hemp protein. Now let's have a look into the cosmetic market. The cosmetic market, the cosmetic products we have currently in Germany are like creams, lip balms, massage oils, peelings, muscle balm, bath balls. But these products are not really like special uh, until now. Currently it's like this, they just use any kind of like cream, they're adding CBD. The customers, they buy it once but are not really happy about it. So we can see the market is like a little bit growing but it's okay. But we expect actually something else in the future. We can see that a lot of companies now in Germany focus on something else. They're focusing on products, like cosmetic products, which are by itself already super good for your body or for your skin, and then they add CBD. The reason for that is that you can already claim a health benefit without CBD, and after adding it, you can then even more have the whole thing. I mean, a lot of, like, you don't want to have a cosmetic store in your bathroom, right? So you don't want to have this for that and this for that. You just want to have one product which includes all kinds of things. So we're working together with a lot of companies. We're doing cosmetic as well. And they want to have products with many ingredients which help you. When we look into the feed market, we currently can see CBD oils. We can see feed with hemp seeds. We can see feed from hemp stems. But we also can see feed from breast seed cake. And these products are going quite well. The problem here right now on the market is a different thing. It's not the taste or nutrition value, which is really nice. The problem here is actually the availability of, this, of like certified products. For the feed market, for the really huge companies, they want to have GMP+, which is a certification for the feed products. And currently, we cannot deliver that yet in that amount. So the feed industry yet is not really happy about the availability, so not really buying it. But in the future, I can tell because I'm talking to a lot of feed companies, they're going to buy that. The last market I want to talk about is the CBD oil market. You probably all know, you probably tried all those products, or maybe have seen it somewhere. Um, and what we can 
see is in the past or also still now, a lot of companies that are just selling like MCT or hemp seed oil and then just add some CBD. And this is working quite well, we can see that. But we are producing CBD for a lot of companies and they are asking now for something more specific. Uh, specific. They want to have something more special. They want to have a product which is solving one problem. Let's say sleep, for example. So they want to have a sleeping product. So they add, for example, melatonin and they're adding CBD to it. And this is what we can see a lot of people request. Or a product, for example, for like reducing skin problems. So they're adding some vitamins or some other stuff which is good for your body and then adding CBD. This has the benefit that you can um, advertise the health claim, but also having CBD included. But there is still a legal issue about it and I'm gonna talk about it later. Yeah, so one part of, of my presentation is what is actually allowed and what is not allowed. And what is allowed definitely in food is that you can produce something made of hemp seeds. All the products you have seen basically in the third slide. And what is kind of a gray zone right now in the food market and where you can see a lot uh, in the industry as well are like CBD oils sold as aroma oils or also sold as a food supplement. So a lot of companies in Germany, they're basically, for example, adding melatonin, uh, claiming it as a sub food supplement and getting like a law statement which says this product is allowed and then adding CBD and um, selling it like this. But this is a gray zone, so I definitely want to say CBD in food is not allowed, it's novel food, that's how it is. There's some legal tricks where you can use this gray zone, but we do not recommend to do it. What we definitely do not recommend to do is just selling a CBD oil with no additional thing, selling it as food. But why do I not recommend it? Basically, you're destroying the whole industry. Because if you do this, selling a CBD oil as food and adding nothing else, and you get raided and it's in the newspaper, the, news, like the newspaper will say like, Forbidden products with CBD got raided by the police and it's obvious then companies don't want to work with you because companies like, hey, I don't want to work with something illegal. So please do not sell CBD oil as a food because it's getting a lot of problems. I really hope it's going through novel food soon and we can sell it as a, really as a food as it should be, but we have to stick to the law. It's really important. Another part of um, like selling something is the cosmetic part. A lot of companies, especially in Germany, they're selling CBD as cosmetic because there is a list uh, from the European um, Commission, they're publishing this, the COSING, and they have a list, it's called INKI. Like, and in this list, they're including all kinds of ingredients where they think it's okay to be used in cosmetic, but they also state on the same website that this is no legal insurance that you can sell it as cosmetic. So there is actually no legal basement to sell it as a cosmetic product. So currently actually all kind of products, we, do not, we cannot sell it as a food, we cannot sell it as a cosmetic. So when we look really into it, it's not really easy to sell it. But as a cosmetic is something where a lot of companies do and we do that a lot and we didn't have any problem yet. We, said, we have done it like at least 50 or 60 times for so many companies and no company yet had any problem. And one part of registering a product as a cosmetic is um, do a safety assessment, stability assessment, microbiology test, and then it works mostly. You get that online and then it works. And the ingredients you currently can include is like hemp seed oil, it's uh, cannabis sativa seed oil called, then also CBD, so cannabidiol, and CBG. And what you're officially allowed to say on the product, at least in Germany, is you can, when you use it for mouth, you can say oral mouth care product, or for body use as a skincare product. On animal feed market, it's really close to the, like really similar to the food market. You can sell it as a hemp seed product. Like when, sorry, excuse, excuse me. When there's hemp seed inside, it's, it's no problem, that's fine. But then there's also gray zone. We have a lot of products, as you've seen before, with CBD oil for pets. And this is unfortunately um, also in a gray zone. Um, it works, the people do it. I uh, don't have problems yet, but we don't recommend to do it, but it's what a lot of companies in Germany do. It works out because the feed industry or pet industry is quite open for this. There are people, they know it's good, nothing bad happened yet, um, so that's fine. And the same as the food thing is, um, please do not sell just the CBD oil for pets and then as, as officially registered uh, feed product or pet product. It's the same with the food market, it's gonna destroy it. Uh, you will get a lot of problems and it's causing problems for the whole industry. So this was my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great afternoon.